Hello. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use the empirical rule on your uh, graphing calculator. Um, now we've already talked about empirical rule, which is uh, called the rule of thumb or the 321 rule. Um, but what we'll do is we'll show how to use the graphing calculator in order to see what the area uh, under the curve is, assuming that the mean is zero and that the standard deviation is one. Okay, so um, let's first look at what the area under the curve is with one standard deviation. So, okay, we'll go to second vars. Um, now what I want to do is I actually just want to find the area between uh, one, one standard deviation um, so that's going to be normal CDF. Now uh, the much older calculators actually don't show this menu but if you uh, don't see it then in any case it's in the same order from lower upper mean and standard deviation respectively you just have to separate them using commas now <clears throat> most likely if um, your calculator has been recently reset then it's going to show this lower bound of negative 1 e99 um, that's scientific notation for negative 10 to the 99 now, in either case, uh, if that's not there, then if you know what your lower bound is, you just input it. Um, so in our case, our lower bound is negative 1. Now, our upper bound is actually going to be uh, also one standard deviation, so we're going to just put 1. Now, the mean uh, has to be, by default, has to be 0. And that includes the standard deviation would need to be 1 as well. And that's just so that uh, the calculator understands that you're using the standard normal curve, which um, you'll learn in chapter 7 under the normal distribution. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to just hit enter. And uh, for those that uh, have the older models, most likely this is exactly what you see, uh, normal CDF, and then you're just gonna type negative one comma one comma zero comma one. And then, uh, so we're just gonna hit enter. And uh, okay, so it gave us 0 0.682689480, which is roughly about 68%, which is exactly what um, we said uh, the area is uh, when we were first learning empirical rule. Now if you want to uh, get a more visualization of this then in that case the graphing calculator does do that but let me just go ahead and uh, demonstrate how to find uh, the area under the curve using two standard deviations from the mean. So once again you're going to go to second vars and uh, make sure that you do select normal CDF. Uh, okay, so it remembers the lower bound that we just used, so in any case, we just need to replace it with our new lower bound and our new upper bound, so that would be negative two. Then we input two because we wanna find uh, the area beneath the curve using two standard deviations. Now, since we know that we're going to be using the standard normal curve, we're just going to leave the mean to be 0 and the standard deviation to be 1. Okay, so let's just click Enter. Okay, and again, uh, in this case that you have, that the calculator just shows immediately the normal CDF function, uh, it's kind of like an order of uh, lower comma, upper, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation. Um, now, there is a way to calculate the area without having to use what we call a z-score, which in any case, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, those are z-scores. Um, so in any case, by uh, almost like by default, you can actually replace the lower and the upper with uh, any measurement that you're using. Um, and that includes the mean and the standard deviation. So like if I was trying to find the area beneath the curve with respect to heights of males,
then in any case, I can input the respective height measurement and also the um, the average height of a male, and then also the standard deviation. Okay, um, and that's actually pretty useful because it saves you the trouble of having to calculate the z-score. So we just uh, hit enter, and we find that the area beneath the curve is 95% approximately. Now, uh, in this case, like um, we see that like the area is actually increasing. So remember that empirical rule, you had that one standard deviation is 68%, and uh, two standard deviations is 95%. And we have one more because it is called the 321 rule or the 123, whichever way that you'd like to call it. And once again, I'm going to kind of show you how you can actually visualize this um, using your calculator. So again, we go to second VARs and then uh, we select normal CDF. Okay, so we want to know three standard deviations, and in reality, um, when we're dealing with uh, calculating uh, probabilities, um, normally we're gonna always stay within three standard deviations because anything beyond that is more certain. So um, we can have z-scores that exceed uh, three standard deviations, but it's not really needed. So, <clears throat> Once again, we leave the mean to be 0 and 1, and that's just because we're actually using the standard normal curve that uses um, the integer values along the, uh, the horizontal axes. So we just uh, click Enter. Uh, and of course, like uh, in the event that you know you saw this, you would just do lower, upper, mean, standard deviation. Okay, so just hit enter. And we find that the approximate uh, area under the curve, or probability for that matter, is 99.7%, uh, which is exactly the, um, uh, the percentage of which that we learned uh, the empirical rule. Now, of course, um, we see that there are these um, extra uh, decimal places, which in any case, you know, um, the calculator is actually uh, more accurate in the sense that our approximation was 68%, 95%, 99.7% respectively. So, you know, try not to get too caught up on like, you know, oh, I thought it's supposed to be exactly 68%, 95%. Um, it's actually because the calculator is using an advanced method of which that it's going to be, of course, way more accurate than how it would be if you were uh, taking uh, a stats course that didn't allow you to use a calculator but allow, uh, made you use like an appendix of which that those charts are very, uh, uh, very large and uh, almost very wasteful <laughs> in the sense that, you know, now that a calculator can do this, then there's no need to really refer to those appendix charts at all. Okay, so um, I mentioned that I was going to demonstrate how to get uh, the visualization of the um, the graphing um, or of the the curve, um, and it's actually pretty interesting. Um, so what we can do is uh, from the main menu, you can actually select second vars and hit the right arrow and select shade norm. Now in our case like uh, we just need to input whichever that you know we want to know like okay if we're using a lower bound of uh, infinity almost we can leave this actually. And then let's say that you know we want to do like uh, one standard deviation. So this is actually the percentage that lies uh, or is less than uh, one standard deviation. Um, now I'm actually going to leave it in the standard mode with the mean to be zero and the standard deviation to be one respectively. Uh, interestingly enough, if you have the TI-84 plus uh, 
model, you can actually select the color. If not, then uh, I believe the default is uh, just like the font color that you see right here. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as blue. So we hit enter and I'm only showing it like this because um, you'll see that the graph or the shaded uh, picture, it doesn't look really good. <laughs> so in actuality, I should have uh, changed the window uh, so that you can easily uh, view the area beneath the curve. So. Um, I just did this just so that you could see like, you know, okay, what happens if you don't uh, change the window settings. So in order to view uh, properly the area beneath the curve, you actually do need to change the window um, as follows. The min will be negative three, the max will be three, the scale will be left as one, uh, the minimum is negative, we'll do negative point two. And this is just so that I can easily see, um, you know, like, uh, the shaded area. Um, so try not to get too caught up on, you know, where did I get these numbers? Um, I can explain about the minimum for X and the max for X as, uh, as three standard deviations because we mentioned that you normally want to stay within three standard deviations in the first place. Um, but these values, I just found that it kind of just works if I just tweak them by inputting these values, negative 0.2, negative, uh, oh, sorry, no, 0.4 for the max. <clears throat> and then uh, the scale uh, is going to be 0.1, and uh, leave the resolution uh, as 1, then that'll be fine. Okay, so um, let's go back to our graph by selecting graph. Uh, oh. It erased our. It erased our um, our picture. Um, that's a first. So, let's go to second vars again, and let's just demonstrate the drawing function shade norm, and uh, let's just try negative two standard deviations instead. And hopefully this shows. Okay, there we go. So we see that the, um, the shaded area beneath the curve, if I'm going to use two standard deviations within the mean, is, uh, as you can see, it's 95%. And it shows the low and it shows the upper. So in actuality, this means that you can calculate the area beneath the curve by using the shaded norm function if you want to. Um, now, one thing to consider or to just, you know, uh, keep in mind is that the um, the drawing has to be cleared because if you don't then it just stays there so um, and if not then you can always just reset it um, but you know if it if there's a function for it then why should we have to reset it so just go to um, let's try second program Okay, so second program, and then select clear draw. Uh, oh, okay, so it did clear it uh, for us. Uh, it was supposed to take us to the home screen, but you know, uh, it, whatever works. 